Hi, I'm Hans Wilhelm. In this video, I want us to take a closer look at the word indifference. If you are a Stoic, the word indifference has a special meaning for you, following the philosophies of Marcus Aurelius, Seneca and Epictetus. It suggests to calmly accept whatever is happening and to be indifferent to things like pain, joy, grief or pleasure. It sounds like a wise philosophy, but I personally believe that it is better to question our emotions and our feelings instead of pushing them back into our subconscious because they do have a message for us. The meaning of the word indifference was deepened for me by reading Yuval Noah Harari's international bestseller, Sapiens. I've used some of his amazing observations in a previous video on Technology Unmasked. Today, I want us to consider something very different. I'll begin with sugar. It was virtually unknown in Europe until the end of the Middle Ages. But from the 17th century onwards, Europeans got totally obsessed with anything sweet, from tea to candy. Sugar, just like cotton, cocoa, coffee, tobacco and rum, was imported in large quantities from America. It was a booming business. Everybody connected with the trade made huge profits, with the exception of approximately 10 million African slaves who were imported to America. Millions more died during wars waged to capture these slaves or during the long voyage from inner Africa to the shores of America. Those who survived endured a short and horrible life. The slave trade was no secret at the time in Europe and naturally not in America. It was run by private slave trade companies who sold their shares to many middle-class Europeans who were looking for a good investment. They all knew that their sweet profits were the result of the sweat, pain and death of countless other human beings. But as Harari points out in his book, the Atlantic slave trade did not stem from racist hatred towards Africans. No, it was greed and indifference. The individuals who bought the shares and became stockholders didn't care. The brokers who sold the slaves and the managers of the slave trade companies didn't care, nor did the owners of the sugar plantations. And most Europeans who enjoyed their sweet drinks, their coffee, their cocoa, their rum and cotton didn't give much thought of how these products were produced. They all were indifferent to the suffering and cruelty of these slaves. But with time there were individuals with conscience who spoke up against slavery. When the English and American Quakers began to question the morality of slavery, it was the beginning of the abolitionist movement that sought the end of the Atlantic slave trade and set slaves free. Now we could think that similar cruelties like mass slavery could hardly happen again in today's time. After all, with the internet, we know instantly if such a crime is committed anywhere. People would not allow that. People would be up in arms if they now discovered large amounts of humans traded and kept in chains or cages. We would think that they would boycott all products that resulted from such cruelty. But is it really true? Walking through any supermarket, we can see customers leisurely choosing from large displays of meat like veal chops, pork chops, steaks, lamb, chicken, turkey and seafood, all attractively packaged and ready to be consumed. Most customers, as well as any producer of the eggs, milk and meat, really stop and think about the fate of the chicken, cows, pigs, whose body part or emissions they are consuming. Just like the candy and sweet tea customers didn't think much about the slaves who made their delicacies happen. Since the beginning of modern mechanized agriculture, these animals are often mass-produced and condemned their entire life in cages, chains or crates where each animal feels unmeasurable pain and distress. Here are just a few examples. The egg and poultry industry often squeeze hens into tiny cages in which they can hardly move or even stand erect. Pigs are known for their high intelligence and inquisitive nature, yet pig farmers routinely confine nursing sows inside such small crates that they are literally unable to turn around. Many dairy cows live almost their entire life inside a small enclosure, standing, sitting and sleeping in their own urine and excrements. To harvest the milk for the dairy market, the baby calf is ripped from the mother at birth. The rest of their short life they spend in narrow dark boxes to become veal. 
These are all living creatures with complex emotional worlds. They feel, they bond, they fear, they can feel lonely and sad, and they also know joy and contentment. They are, as I pointed out in my video, all about animals, our little brothers and sisters. Divine creatures who came here into this world as our companions, not as our slaves or food source. As I mentioned in the same video, a well-balanced vegan or vegetarian lifestyle is statistically a much healthier choice for us humans. So why are we still knowingly create so much horrific misery to millions of others? Just like in the sugar example earlier, it is all about our craving for sensual pleasure. And with this comes the craving to increase profits and production that blinds people to any empathy. In his book Sapiens, Harari concludes, if we accept a mere tenth of what animal rights activists are claiming, then modern industrial agriculture might well be the greatest crime in history. Once again, it is greed and indifference. With this video, I invite us all to think deeply if there is a way how we individually or collectively can prevent the suffering of our little brothers and sisters. It is about the senseless annual slaughtering of 50 billion farm animals. Because eventually, just like in slavery, we will no longer tolerate this. Leonardo da Vinci already said, The time will come when men such as I will look upon the murder of animals as they now look on the murder of men.